Parvailalo. Fine. Let's get this video started. What are the changes you observe after your first crash? Well, I had my first crash around two years ago. I mean, in the 2020. Uh, it was actually one and a half year since I bought my bike, uh, and I did not have a crash because I was I was driving through a lot of highways as well. But I never encountered any you know hiccups or anything. So the story goes like this: I was going behind a truck, and uh, I wanted to overtake it, but I couldn't. So I was just following the truck. So when I was following the truck uh, behind, I was not maintaining the distance. Uh, what it uh, was required so that was my first mistake and uh, when I was not maintaining my distance uh, suddenly a pothole appeared on the road I mean I, I was not able to spot it but I managed to escape it the first pothole but uh, fate is fate so it challenged me and it threw me for some like a surprise mm -mm, for that like that and it threw me a second pothole and the second pothole is the one which I couldn't you know, maneuver and go through it. And I went to through the pothole and I fell. I was around 60 to 70 kilometers an hour. Uh, that was my first crash and only crash where I had my bike fall. Apart from that, I have made, uh, three to four times I have made my bike uh, fall in a parking lot because when I was pulling it back, I slipped and I lost the grip and I made the bike fall three to four times and but I don't think that is a crash so my first crash experience was that uh, unfortunately nothing happened to the bike uh, because I had this uh, frame slider uh, nothing happened to the bike and, and uh, the only damage what, uh, what was there was uh, the front left indicator and uh, the rear foot set yeah, the uh, rear footrest uh, in the left side uh, that was damaged. So I had these two changed. Uh, it cost me around 400 or 300, including the indicator and everything. So this is what um, uh, I faced uh, in my first crash. So what are the lessons you should learn before uh, your first crash, only so that you can avoid it? Or what are the changes you should apply after your first crash if you hadn't? apply it till now so my first advice would be maintain a safe distance that is the first and for the biggest mistake what I did when I was riding on the highway I did not maintain my distance uh, because whenever you are going on a highway the, the trucks would uh, always ride in behind right uh, maintain distance honk okay something like that so I was not maintaining my distance. That was my first mistake what I did. I was maybe like the same distance as this Activa. Uh, what is there in front of me. I was maintaining this much distance only. So that was my first mistake which led to the fall uh, when you are uh, riding on the highway or driving on the highway. That was my first lesson. Second lesson is what I learned and what I I'm applying right now don't be in a hurry to overtake uh, that was my second mistake I was in a hurry to overtake so that's the reason I was not uh, letting the other people also overtake me so that's the second mistake do not be in a hurry to overtake let the people who are behind you go that is totally fine and you can overtake afterwards so that's the second mistake what I did uh, I was in a hurry to overtake so uh, since it was uh, the beginning of my riding career I didn't know all these things what I wanted to do and not to do so that was my second mistake what I did I was in a hurry I wanted to overtake as fast as possible <laughs> and uh, go fast or reach the fast or reach the destination fast the third mistake or the third lesson what uh, you must learn uh, from this incident is wear some protective gear okay uh, i was not uh, i was not uh, you know wearing any gloves knee pads 
uh, some riding boots gloves nothing like that i was wearing a basic jacket uh and i had this and i had the same empty helmet uh, what i am using now and i was wearing normal shoes that's all so these are the things what i was re- wearing and uh, when i fell uh, my knee was hurt uh, it was it was not that bad but uh, i was not able to walk properly for a, for a week mm, it was paining uh, that that was the fourth uh, that was the third thing what i learned uh, i will, we have to wear protective gear though i am not wearing a, any protective gear now and i haven't purchased also uh, because i have reduced the speed that i ride uh, what i was riding b- before uh, when i was when i used to you know ride in my initial days i used to ride around i used to frequently you know speed up slow down speed up slow down uh that is not the case anymore uh now i maintain constant between 80 to 100 if the highway is full empty of minimum of traffic i maintain 100 otherwise if it is full traffic and there are many vehicles uh, in sight of my eyes then uh, i maintain somewhere around 70 to 80 now i'm not doing that uh, speed up slow down business and all so that's the third most important thing uh, you have to wear some protective gear be safe uh yeah for four point uh many people forget this uh, after buying a bike or before buying a bike please concentrate on your braking skills uh though it was an unavoidable situation for me but uh, even if i braked properly uh, i don't know how much uh, but at least i am i'm confident that i could have uh, avoided the fall if my braking skills were as good as what uh, they are now now i have improved a lot uh, since i bought my bike i have improved my braking skills a lot and i avoided and avoided so many fall situations like countless because in this bangalore traffic you you don't know when from where people come from where people exit i mean every entry is exit and every exit is an entry here so you never know so that was the first thing what i worked on the first thing what i worked on uh, after my first crash was uh, my braking skills actually and believe me it will pay you and it will it will pay you a lot because going fast is not at all uh, fun it might be fun in the initial days of your uh, riding career but uh, you might feel thrilled and everything but immediately after 4 years only i'm i'm bored to be honest of riding fast the fifth uh, important thing what i learned after my first fall was riding slow is as important as riding fast and if you are not skilled enough to ride your bike slow then you are not allowed to ride your bike fast as well and how to know that you are skilled enough bangalore traffic <laughs> if if you can manage these kind of slow speeds without putting your foot down you are qualified enough to go fast when you do that when you try to balance your bike and then you learn what are the key points that you should keep in your mind while moving at a low speed so there's a fifth important thing what i learned and what you should keep in mind as well <coughs> maintain riding your bike fast doesn't improve your skill riding your bike slow will definitely improve your skill even when you are riding fast it will teach you a lot sixth important thing and i feel this is this is like i should have kept this point at the second point was the second most important thing but i forgot so this is the second most important thing but i am saying it as a sixth point uh always look at your side mirrors uh please do not please do not remove your side mirrors from your bike so whenever you are riding in in a traffic or on a highway always look at your side mirrors so when you are always overtaking or you are braking please look at the side mirrors once and uh, i will tell you how to uh, how to brake okay uh, when you are braking uh, make sure that there is nobody in the inside uh, part of your mirror so that's the most important thing Uh, when you're braking nobody should be uh, in the inside half of the mirrors 
so that is when you know people are closer to you and you should not break suddenly or otherwise you can do progressive braking or like slow slowing down your uh, pace at a constant rate so that is the important thing when you're braking and when you're overtaking look at the outer end of the mirror that is the outer half of the mirror if you are looking at the outer half of the mirror you will know what is the distance uh, between you and the person who is coming behind you and if he is outer part of your mirror then it is safer to overtake you can give your indicator and you can overtake but if the person is in in the inside half of your mirror do not overtake this is the observation what i have done based on my experience and believe me this will save you a lot of headache you should you never want to you know turn your head make your neck cry and everything whenever you want to overtake whenever you want to break and this will save you a lot of headache i mean it because i tr- i tried the same thing uh, uh after uh, for some time like 3 to 4 months whether i can get used to it or not i removed the mirrors in, in my bike uh, for 3 to 4 months and i tried it but believe me it's it, it's it's a total mess i can't look what is coming behind me i can't look what is coming beside me and immediately after putting the mirrors on i can sense the change i feel confident that uh, nobody is behind me or beside me and i can ride uh in my own pace i don't think these are these are some things what everybody teaches you uh, it's only people who are you know uh, making an observation on their own skills and mindset and how they ride the seventh point what i want to make is uh, use your indicators many people neglect this man i don't know i don't know why people don't even use indicators whether it is on the highway or in, inside the city not like always even if you want to make like if you, even if you want to go to from uh, left side of the road what i'm riding now to the right side of the road it's not like you have to maintain the discipline every time but whenever it is necessary you have to use an indicator there's nothing wrong in that i i don't know why people don't use indicators even inside the city or even on the highway I, on the highway at least i can see some four wheelers and two wheelers who are uh, aware of the you know traffic and aware of the roads and what is the importance of these things they do uh, use the indicators but inside the city it's very minimal man it's almost negligible i have seen i am mo- most probably i have seen like 10 pe- 10 persons that's all till now yeah. i think these are the seven points what i have noticed till now in my three and a half years of uh, riding my cbr make sure to share this video man uh, i'm i'm not asking you to share all of my videos i'm asking you to share this particular video because this can save a lot of lives or a lot of people from their you know misery or whatever you can do i was i was in actually i was in a very deep depression that time when i had my first fall uh, because my knee was injured and uh, i thought i was a pretty good rider uh, i and uh, when i had my first fall and uh, the thought that i was not even able to you know escape a pothole it was always driving my mind even now even now i feel i feel very very you know uh, i am i don't know how to express it but honestly even now i feel kind of uh, sad that uh, i had my first fall so these are the things what i learned and i hope these uh, things helps you i'm trying to say to share this video because this can save some people from their fall uh, injury some people even a major injury i think this this will be helpful for a lot of people i mean even if i can even if i can you know Uh, save one fall of a biker or the person who is who is riding a bike then it is a win win situation for me uh, to be to have uploaded this video to youtube thank you so much uh, once again and see you in my next video